At night, against the New York cityscape, the new Hayden Planetarium looks like a piece of the sky that's been captured and put on display in a giant glowing showcase. And so it was intended. There comes a time in each of our lives when it first dawns on us that we are not the center of the universe, that we are part of something larger than ourselves. If ever an event could inspire such a revelation, so the opening yesterday of the new planetarium was it. We are living in the golden age of astronomy. Going to a planetarium used to be like lying in the grass, staring up at the night sky. Not at this one. Here, it's like hurtling through space at the speed of light. The story of how it got built is almost as amazing as the building itself. Architecture is the art of kind of dreaming and knowing how to get out of the box you're in. That is literally what architect James Stewart Polshek did when he designed the new Hayden Planetarium. But that's getting ahead of our story. Originally, the plan was just to refurbish the old one that was state of the art in 1935. But then a board member asked Polshek an unbelievable question. He said, what would you do if money was no object? And I just went, blow it up. Is it true that all of this began with a drawing on a napkin? Absolutely. Uh, it's a great story. Uh, Jim Ellen Polshek Futter is, is president of the American Museum of Natural History, day. parent of the I Rose mean, Center for like Earth and Space, which includes the new planetarium. To you. We were having a cup of coffee right in this office, and he picked up the napkin, and he put his, put his pen on it, and he said, see this? And he drew a circle, and then he put a box around it. It was, it was an epiphany. In the mood for a millennium monument, New York City put up $40 million for starters toward the $210 million price tag. One of the museum's trustees handed over $20 million. The timing was perfect. At the end of the 90s, Wall Street not only reached the stars, it helped pay for them. This glass wall is an extremely important part of the project. Last July, when the glass was being installed, we followed Polzhek on his first visit to the roof. It moves a little bit, so we had to put the stiffener, but it looks structural. We spent so much time making this light glass. And... The glass, almost an acre of it, is called water white because it's so clear. Most structural glass has a green tint. The glass cube is there to enclose the sphere, a four million pound object that appears to be weightless. The fact that you've taken something that's rooted in the earth and the new version seems to be floating in air, what does that say? Come fly with me. Uh, if I was Frank Sinatra, I would get up and sing. Or journey into space. This is Tom Hanks. Rising into view is the most advanced star projector in the world. The planetarium is inside the sphere. We're heading for the Orion Nebula, about 1,500 light years from Earth. People will wonder, well, what is that for? And what's this for? And during the show, we'll see it rotate, turn. We'll see the planet projectors move. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, director of the Hayden Planetarium, is describing the Sputnik-like object with the heavy-duty name, the Zeiss Mark 9, that projects images of the stars and planets on the dome. There's a whole other technology we are bringing into the space theater that will enable us to go beyond the night sky from Earth and actually journey throughout the galaxy and throughout the universe so that we're no longer Earth-based. To know how important that is to Tyson, you've got to know what happened to him at the old planetarium when he was nine. nine. I walked into the Hayden Planetarium and the lights dimmed and the stars came out. First, I thought it was a hoax. How could there be this many stars in the nighttime sky? 
I know how many stars are in the nighttime sky. I saw them from the Bronx, and I could count them on just a couple of hands. By the time he was 11, he was taking astronomy classes there. And I still kept my certificate that they gave me for completing that course. And that was the certificate is, they actually handed you? This is the actual certificate that I was given for having completed that course, and I've saved it ever since. With a PhD in astrophysics, he now writes books on the subject, teaches at Princeton, and signs the certificates that are given to a new generation of Neil Tysons. So I've got a fancy fountain pen, and I sign every one of these every year. As visitors spill out of the planetarium after the space show, they find themselves on what is called the Cosmic Pathway. Top of the list of what we wanted the visitor to get out of this facility is an awareness, a sensitivity, a visceral appreciation for how long this universe has been around. 13 billion years of cosmic time is staggering. If you unfurl this, it'd be longer than a football field. And upon this, we have laid down the 13 billion years of cosmic time. And at the top of this ramp, we have a place where you can measure how long your footstep is so that you can personalize it. So you line your foot up at the bottom here. I take a step, and I come out at about 70 million years so that I know as I walk down here, that's the rate at which time is passing. It is not until the very like bottom the of the ramp, no the end of the timeline, that when dinosaurs appear and then, present, finally, the humans. And we have mounted an actual human hair on this railing. There's an actual human hair, and the thickness of that hair represents, on this timeline, 30,000 years from the cave paintings of troglodytes right on up to modern day. All took place within the thickness of that human hair. Everywhere, the gee whiz factor is evident. Gee whiz repeated and underlined. If you throw a big, big asteroid onto the moon, it would make a crater? Yeah, yeah that's right, it would. <laughs> As sophisticated as this place is, in the day of special effects, the trick for the Hayden Planetarium is competing with Hollywood. How? Not just by pleasing visitors, but by provoking them. And by presenting cutting-edge science in Hollywood-style packaging. Space brought to you not only by NASA and the Hubble Telescope, but by actor Tom Hanks and the best Silicon Valley animators with music that sounds like a film score. I think we have a secret weapon, and our secret weapon is the power of reality. So when you come into that space theater and you see all of this fantastic technology and the most up-to-date techniques applied to tell you a story that is true and that is so fantastic in its own right, I think it's much more thrilling, and that's been the reaction of everybody who's seen it. I can predict with near certainty that it will become an immediate landmark in New York City. It will be in every gift shop on Times Square. There will be, for better or for worse, a plastic cube with a sphere in it. If ever a form was the embodiment of its function, the Hayden Planetarium is. It is calling to you. It is saying, in here, we have contained the universe for you. And when was the last time you heard the word awesome used to describe the real thing? Mm -hmm.